Right, okay. Um, so, just taking us through, we'll look at declaration now. Now, what do I mean when I say declaration? I mean, I have to, um, I have to actually define data in Maya. <clears throat> so, what that actually means is, if I were to store my name, Dean, I would have to declare something to store it in. Declaration is really easy. I would either do it uh, string, int, or float. These are actually declaration commands. And I put the name immediately after. So I, and I could put my name. And I'm following the uh, Maya convention as well as capitalization of the second word. Uh, my name is Dean. Now, I've had to put this in quotes. Uh, this is just purely syntax. Uh, any any type of little operator or uh, or any symbols that we find are just uh, syntax. And it's not like a case, it's not a case where I can be slightly wrong either. So if I missed one of those out, and again I'm just selecting the entire line and pressing numerical enter, it's going to come up with a an error and say blah 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 invalid use of object. Whereas if I just have proper syntax. It says my result is Dean. So what actually happened when I pressed enter? Well, Maya went along in a linear fashion and said, oh, you're wanting to declare uh, somewhere to store data. You're going to call this data store my name. Now, it's very important that we have a, uh, a dollar sign there. And this is the name. This could actually be anything. I could name it like that. but. It's kind of important when you're starting out to, and uh, when you've been using Mel for a long time, that you uh, you have a naming convention that actually signifies what's in it. So if this was color, I would put color. Uh, but yeah, this is the uh, equal sign, and it, whatever's on the right hand side, it assigns. So it's an assignment operator that throws the word Dean and stores it in my name. So an int, same same thing. Well, this time we'll go with my age equals, and I don't need quotes or anything because this is a, a number. <clears throat> so my age is 30, which is way too old. Very important now that I've got multiple lines that I do adhere to uh, putting this semicolon here. Float, a fractional number, uh, my height equals, oh god knows, in centimeters, uh, what, 179.5, we'll put. And I'm going to carry all those out. Now, Maya's just stored them for me. Ways that I can test, <clears throat> ways that I can test what's inside a, a, a variable store is I can just say print and something like my, my age. Carry this out. And unfortunately, because I've zoomed in, I don't see the result, but the result was 30. So it knows that I stored 30 in my in a variable called my age of type integer, which is whole number again, fractional number, and ASCII characters. Um, so that's just basically uh, how we do assignment. There's an important thing. Uh, there's an important thing to uh, look at here, though, uh, which we'll need to know before we start. And I'm going to demonstrate this with, let's say, box or draw, actually. Draw, you can tell this is on the fly and I've not pre-done that, you know, pre-scripted this in any way, as in I'm not following any set structure. Uh, so string draw. And in our draw, I'm going to put my socks. Carry that out the result is socks. If I simply ask what is in, and I'm very lazy, so what is in my draw, and go down, it says you've got socks in your draw. Yay. Okay, well now we've put my socks in there. Let's put a pants in there. Result pants, and we'll ask what's in there. And Maya comes back and says pants, but my socks have disappeared. Okay, then we've got a slight problem here in the fact that what if we want to store multiple entries in a uh, in a variable? Well, we have to turn it into a list or what we call an array. 
Now an array is really easy. An array is just angle brackets. However, let's start from scratch with this. We'll say string drawers. I have to name it different because it's already defined in my... Uh, there's already a variable called this. Um, so I can't simply say new variable and these angle brackets are just to say this is going to be a list. Um, I can't simply say that or else Maya's going to come back and say invalid redeclaration of variable as a different type, blah blah blah. So I have to change its name slightly. Draws, since there are going to be many of them. Now I've just declared a variable and I've, there's absolutely nothing in it. So if I say print what's in my drawers by the way, I'm saying drawers just so that I know how to spell it. There's no, uh, there's nothing in there. Now another way that we can assign uh, things is, I don't, since it's already declared, I don't have to redeclare it. I can just say draws, but then I'm going to put something specifically in this list at entry zero, and I'm going to say that's going to be my bra. Now. I'm lazy. In entry one, I'm going to put my socks. And because I'm lazy again, in entry two, I'm going to put pants. So I can carry all these out. Then ask, what is in my drawers? Maya returns to me bra, socks, and pants. Now another thing that I could do here is ask specifically what's in the second drawer or entry number one. Maya will return to me socks. So this is an array. Now it's important to understand uh, arrays because uh, commands have returns. So if I want to say string selected um, equals and we're going to carry out a command. This little this little symbol here, whatever that is, it's actually above the tab key and left of the number one and you just press it and it gives you that. It's not actually a single quotation because that's single quotation. I've actually no idea what this means and I haven't had any idea what it means for the past ten years which is really ignorant of me. Um, or what it's called rather. But we need it in order to carry out a command inside it and the values get passed to selected or our variable name uh, called selected, simply doing the ls command. If we carry out this by itself, Maya will list every single node in our scene, <clears throat> of which I think there's about 50 odd, uh, with uh, including now my uh, p cubes at the end. Um, this command has returned to me a big list. Now I can actually say list and pass it the flag SL which will only list what I've got selected and currently I have nothing selected but if I select a cube and say list SL it comes back with the result P cube. Now what we're going to cover in the next lesson is or the next little video thing is passing this over but having a look at an error that we're going to get.